Hi guys, welcome. I'm Robert. I'm one half of the Suburban Preppers along with my wife Laura. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to survive the upcoming winter 23-24 cold and flu season. We've just recently both had coronavirus, COVID-19, um, whatever the latest variant is, who, who knows anymore, there's, there's that many. Uh, we both had it. I, I wasn't too bad, fortunately, but Laura was hit quite rough with it. She was quite poorly for a number of days. So we thought it might be a good idea to do a video on this topic. Like I say, you've got your yeah, common cold, um, flu, if you're unlucky. And, and like I say, nowadays, whatever variant of COVID they decide is the, the dominant one in your area of the world nowadays. So... I'll be right back after this. So before we look at what you can do to ease your way through cold and flu season if you're already poorly, we look at what you can do to perhaps prevent getting poorly in the first place or to minimize the amount of time that you're poorly if you're unfortunate enough to get ill throughout this winter coming up. I think it's inevitable that all of us at some point will will catch a cold, whether it's just a little sniffle, runny nose, or if, if you're full on bed bound, can't move, aching, sore throat, you know, I, I'm sure you know the score by now. So like I say, one of the things that we can do before we get ill is take as many preventive measures to try and not get ill in the first place. And you're looking at things like staying fit and healthy beforehand, you know, having active. You don't have to be going to the, the gym or, or whatever, you know, just going for a, a brisk walk two or three times a week. Eating a varied diet with a good variety of food groups, you know, plenty of fruit and vegetables, um, good proteins, not processed rubbish, basically. Um, you know, if, if you're going to Starbucks, or Costa four or five times a week, um, having a, a pizza and a few few beers or bottle of wine at the weekend, you're probably not setting yourself up for a good start. You know, it's not to say that you can't do those things. You know, but you know, it, it's going to take its toll on your body. Um, the other things you can do is um, multivitamins every day. Um, vitamin C specifically. There's been a lot of study on vitamin C for colds and flus. Once upon a time, it was the accepted theory that if you did have a cold or flu, if you had plenty of vitamin C, it would speed up your recovery. That doesn't seem to be the case nowadays. The accepted theory nowadays is if you have a regular intake of vitamin C on an everyday basis, it helps strengthen your immune system. So when you do unfortunately get ill, your body is in a stronger position to fight off the illness. And the duration of your illness will hopefully be less than if you weren't topped up with vitamin C. There's other things you can do to try to prevent getting ill in the first place. You know, um, good hygiene and housekeeping practices, um, depend on what your environment is. You know, if, if you're at work, say, um, make sure you keep things clean, tidy, make sure you, you sanitize every now and again. I don't know. People work in a wide variety of different workplaces. So if you work in an office, you know, make sure you're, you're wiping your desk down. Make sure you're wiping your keyboard, your screen, your mouse, whatever. Um, if you work in a catering environment, obviously you should be cleaning anyway. Um, supermarket again, if, you, if you're on a checkout. I know they, they seem to be few and far between these days. But if you're on a checkout in the supermarket again, just, just cleaning down your, your workstation. You know, everyone knows how to clean. So keeping on top of hygiene and housekeeping is a good preventive measure. Personal preventive measures you can take. Um, everyone will be familiar now after the, the COVID pandemic. Um, face masks, you know, the, again, the jury's out whether they work or don't work, but they certainly can't do you any harm in terms of catching a cold or flu. Um, and also antibacterial sanitizing gel for to keep your hands clean obviously good hand washing for after like you've been at the toilet if you've been touching surfaces that you've not cleaned or whatever things like that 
So moving on now to if you're already poorly. So if you're unfortunate enough to already be poorly and you're looking at how to make yourself feel better, having a well-stocked medicine cabinet just with over-the-counter items will do you a world of good. So we've got things like so specialist cold and flu treatments. We have the branded Beatrums or the, the generic over-the-counter thing. Um, I believe they're, they're kind of the, the same thing. They may not be the exactly the same same drug inside but in fact I, I think they are just looking at the label paracetamol um something i can't pronounce in caffeine same in those um like i say that that one is two or three pounds over the counter that one is about a pound does the same job just keep in mind these do have paracetamol and um, acetaminophen in the us be careful that you don't take too much and overdose on it if you take this one don't take this one vice versa also we have just regular paracetamol slash acetaminophen um again if you're taking this don't take these otherwise you may accidentally take an overdose and game over so um ibuprofen as well goes into the the pain relief um you know just a, a different pain relief you can take um we have infant acetaminophen, and this we've got this one for our grandson. But um, here in the UK, the brand Calpol, you have from two months plus, and then you get from six years plus. I believe there might actually be a, a two years plus, two years to six years. But but um, speak to the the pharmacist and get one that is suitable for your needs or your family's needs. Again, just be careful not to give more than the recommended doses because the consequences could be fatal. Um, after that, it's it's just kind of more more feel good things. You know, we have um, cough medicine. You know, everyone's familiar with cough medicine. Again, just just make sure that it's safe to use with any of the other ones because some of them may contain paracetamol, acetaminophen. Um, Again, speak to the pharmacist, and also if you're taking any other medication for lifelong illnesses or or whatever, you know, just make sure that you're able to take over the counter medicine. It's not going to interact with any other medication that you're already taking. Um, throat lozenges. If you've got a sore throat, scratchy throat, or whatever, they're an absolute godsend. Equally, we also have anaesthetic throat spray. Um blast and throat it kind of numbs the throat for a little bit it can give relief um mental flavor three sprays to the back of throat repeat every two to three hours um do not use for more than three days in a row or more than eight times in a day but like i say give you relief um tissues if your nose is running like a tap you know you need to be wiping but it's quite important now you know if you're wiping bin it antibac gel on your hands and then lastly, we've got um, the, the vapor rub. Again, I discussed this in the seven pound for seven days video. Uh, I'll try and put a link above to that one if you're interested in watching it. Uh, but basically it's, it's petroleum jelly that's infused with like menthol. I think it may be like eucalyptus. I'm, I'm not sure, but, but anyway, it, um, you rub a little bit on your chest and the, the vapor is releasing it. It helps you breathe easy. Myself personally, although I don't recommend this, you know, it's, it's not the proper way to do it. I, I put a little bit just in underneath my nose. Um, so the vapors are there when I'm breathing. I, I get them. Um, Albus oil bath. Um, again, it's a similar to this. Uh, it's, it's a mental scented thing, which helps is a decongestant. But you pull that in the bath. It's a bubble bath, you know, and you, you're lying soaking in a bath. When you're feeling poorly, a nice warm bath helps anyway, but then you're breathing in the, the menthol and that help, can help to soothe you as well. Next up is making sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids. So just as a, a representation of fluid, we've got some orange juice here. 
but it could just be water, um, a nice tea or, or a cup of coffee or whatever, a squash, whatever your preferred drink is. Um, just make sure that you're drinking plenty of it, especially if you've got a runny nose. You're going to be losing loads of fluids through that. I know it's, it's not very pleasant to think about, but essentially your body's losing fluid. You need to replace that fluid, otherwise you'll end up dehydrating. Um, honey and lemon is a, another good thing. So a cup of hot water, a squirt of lemon juice, and a teaspoon of honey just stirred in, you know. Soothes your throat, gives you a little bit of a vitamin C boost. Again, that's debatable whether it, it helps or not, but it certainly makes you feel better at the time. Um, just make sure that you're drinking plenty. When you go into the toilet, you essentially you want your pee to be clear. You don't want it to be a dark yellow colour. Next on the list is staying warm. Um, again, I don't need to tell you when you're suffering from a cold, a flu or COVID, you can feel very cold, have the shivers, you know, doesn't matter what you do, you just, you don't feel warm. Um, so you need to take steps to keep your, your body warm. You know, that's, that's your body trying to fight the, the virus, trying to get it out of your system, trying to kill it off. So anything you can do to help your body to maintain the, the warm temperature, that'll that'll help. Just be careful that you don't overheat. Um, and again, this is where you need to be drinking plenty of fluids, that you don't dehydrate yourself through sweating when you're, you're poorly. Um, so, like I say, we have things like hot water bottles. Um, this is this is Laura's hot water bottle. Uh, this one here again it's it's Laura's but I've used it you know it, it you fill it up you put it over your, your shoulders and it just it's like it's someone giving you a hug you know it just it just makes you feel nice um a good pair of thick woolly socks you know keep your feet warm you know it's little things like that that can make the world of difference you know if your feet are cold your body's cold just because you're inside of your home doesn't mean you can't do things like Wearing gloves or a woolly hat, but my hat, Laura's hat, you know. The heat escapes from your head if your hands are cold, you know. It, it's, it's, keep you, keep you warm, you know. It's, you can do things like put extra layers on. So, like, you know, I've, I've got my, my jogging trousers here. But there'd be no issue me putting a second pair over the top or whatever. Um, it's all about layers, trapping air. Equally, I'm sat on it at the moment. It's it's on my stool, but I've got my coat down here. It's a, a thermal type coat. You know, it's it's a, a quilted coat rather. You know, I I would have no issue putting those on and being sat on the the sofa, all wrapped up, keep nice and warm. Um, blankets. You've got your fleece blankets. You can get your duvet off your bed if you have one. Um, this one here is our favourite. Um, let's see if I can find find where it is. Obviously, it's a, a great big blanket. It's it's in here. So um, basically, it's the heated electric blankets. Um, the the plug goes from here to the mains. You put it over it. It's got wires inside of it. It's very efficient in regards to electricity. It doesn't use a lot of electricity. It doesn't cost a lot. Um, especially in these times where gas and electricity utility bills are very high. Um, but just just sitting with that over you, again, just makes you makes you feel a world of difference, you know. Um, don't discount things like taking a long soak in the bath or having a shower. Um, again, it's it's just warm water going on to you, or if you're laying in the, the bath, warm water. Um, as well, the, the steam might help as a decongestant if you're in the bath or the shower. You've got the, the warm warm vapor. So all of those little things will help. And lastly, sleep. Your body's working hard to fight off this infection that's got you under the weather. I, I say infection, virus, whatever, you know. <laughs> Something that's invaded your body and made you poorly. I don't know if it's a virus infection, what, whatever. That, I'm not a doctor. Um, but your body is fighting it off and it takes its toll. 
you know, it, it's going to wear you out, which which is why you always feel so drained and have zero energy. You need to give your body a chance to recover from that. And the, the best way is making sure that you're getting plenty of sleep. I know some of us aren't so lucky where we, we have to go to work when we're poorly. Other ones of us, you know, we, we get sick pay where we're able to take as much time off as we need when we're poorly and concentrate on recovery. I, I don't know what your situation is. I don't want to tell you what you, you must or must not do. But like I say, where it's available to you, get as much rest and sleep as you can. Give your body a fighting chance to get rid of the the virus that's making you poorly and get you better as quick as possible. So hopefully that's helped you there. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you've liked this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. It tells YouTube that you've enjoyed the content in this video and that they should show it to more people like yourselves. Finally, if you're not already a subscriber, can I ask if you'd please consider subscribing? Helps grow our channel and lets us know that you're enjoying the content that we're providing. And again, it helps increase our reach to other members just like yourselves who want to watch this sort of content. So with that, I'll say goodbye and thanks for watching. Take care.